God. Thank you, Pastor Brandon. And thank you guys for the warm welcome. And let me just get myself all set up. So my name's Linda, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. And I'm so glad to have an opportunity to share part of my testimony today with you guys. So I'm going to start out with a little story. Years ago, I was invited to be part of a master class for principals. And so one day, as part of our class, we had class over at a remote site where we took part in a ropes course. Has anybody done a ropes course? Does anybody not care for heights? Anybody with me on that? Okay, so this ropes course was part of the class, and I needed to do it. So I chose the least intimidating activity and soon found myself climbing a 25-foot high um, telephone pole. And what I needed to do was I needed to climb all the way to the top, and then I needed to stand up when I got there and jump off. And, of course, I had the rigging on me, but I foolishly went first. You guys know that that was not my best choice. So I'm climbing up, and the further I get, the more tired my arms are, and the smaller the ground was getting. But that's what I needed to do. So I climbed all the way up, and I looked around, and I thought about, I just have to have faith. And I really wanted to, like, I asked the guy down at the bottom who was belaying me, I said, can you just like test the rope a little for me? I, I just wanna make sure you can, you can grab me. And he goes, that's not part of it. Really? <laughs> really? I'm 25 feet up here and that's not part of it. And so I took a deep breath and I jumped off. And obviously I made it. I'm really glad, but you know, one of the things I try to do is I try to look for areas where I need faith and I ask God to test me in that area. And sometimes that'll look like climbing up and jumping off of a telephone pole. Sometimes that'll mean singing karaoke on a cruise ship. I did it, <laughs> but the thing is, God hasn't called me to fear, and what God has called me to do is he's called me, and he's called you to trust, and we look in, in the Bible, it tells us again and again to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. And trusting God is part of our mission. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it tells us, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We do not have to see what God is doing for us in order to trust and in order to have faith. Because it is not our job as Christians to know all the answers. The beauty of being a child of God is that he has all the answers. And he is capable of working in any situation, no matter what it looks like for us or what it looks like to others. It can be easy to fall into thinking that once we have accepted Christ, we should expect that all obstacles will be moved out of our way. All our prayers will be answered with what we tell the Lord we want. Yeah. And <clears throat> that, we will, that we're somehow entitled to a smooth road in life. I, I'm going to let you in on something. That's not what it says. That's not what God's called us to. God has called us to trust him. God has called us to have faith in him. 
And God has called us to be obedient to him, regardless of what it looks like and what it feels like. I came to know the Lord when I was seven. I was so excited about Jesus that I went door to door in my neighborhood. And because I was going to make sure all the kids in the neighborhood knew about Jesus and that they were saved because they had to go to heaven with me. Well, this all went well. Then my mom gets a phone call, and apparently there was a family down the street, and they were pagans. And she's like, would you tell your kid to get off my lawn? You know, I'm not wanting my kid to become a Christian, and my kid's getting excited about Jesus, and this is not what we want. And, of course, I heard that, and I was like, well, this is cool. You know, this is cool. Jesus is using even me, even though I'm a little kid. So, so I felt God's presence in my life. And then when I was 10 years old, I lost my father. But What happened was God reminded me in the scripture that God is the God to the fatherless. So I was not fatherless. I was not marginalized. I was not less cared for. If anything, I knew that God was watching out for me in a special way. And I knew that God had a calling on my life regardless of who my parents were or whether or not they were alive. The summer I turned 17 brought a big surprise for me. Suddenly, I had severe ulcers in my mouth and my throat, pain I couldn't escape, and the doctors didn't know why. Doctors gave me pain medication, which I took until I realized I had to make a choice. I was either going to take pain medication and stay at home, or I was going to find a way to live through the pain and do what God was calling me to do. That was a tough decision. And the church that I grew up in, in the faith-based university that I went to, didn't have a box for people who were sick and stayed sick. And... When I was prayed over and I didn't receive healing, I received messages from people. Why wasn't I accepting the healing God was giving me? What was the big secret sin that I had? I was like, gosh, if I had a big secret sin, I'd tell you. At a minimum, I'd tell Jesus so that we could get this show on the road. But you know what? That's not... That's not what God had for me. Because, see, God called me to obedience. God did not call me to pray a magic prayer with all the special components so that he would answer what I wanted the way I wanted it. And the fact is, God has healing for me, and God has done tremendous healing in me. And though it doesn't always look the way I thought it might, The fact is, he's walking with me every step. I continued to ask the Lord for healing. Though I'll be honest with you, going forward for prayer can be excruciating. It can feel like, I have felt at times like I was really disappointing the people praying for me. I was hurting their stats or something. (laughs) You know, I, it's like... (laughs) But you guys know what I'm saying. But here's what it is. If God tells me I need to go forward for prayer, I'm going to be humble and I'm going to go forward. And I'm going to accept the healing he has for me, whatever it looks like. In 2011, a new physical issue came into my life. I developed a condition where I have laryngeal spasms. My... um, my larynx closes sometimes. My, my uh, lungs are fine. My heart is fine. But sometimes my uh, larynx will close. And 
So it'll cut off my oxygen. So if you see me with supplemental oxygen one day, nothing's happened. It's just that day. And a lot of days I don't have to use it, and I'm really grateful for that. But this brought a lot of changes in my life. I officially had reached a new low with a diagnosis of vocal cord dysfunction. I had just married an amazing man. Shout out for Scott. That's right. That's right. And who walked through this with me and tell me every single step of the way that I was never a burden, but I was his blessing. I had to retire, and we didn't know if I would be collecting retirement or disability. And he chose to take that moment to hold me in his arms and tell me that God was our provider and that it wasn't a question of whether or not I needed to retire, that this was just what I needed to do and that he was with me all the way. I didn't have to worry about it. So I spoke with a wise counselor who encouraged me to think of my health problems as having an unwelcome visitor in my home. And this, this was very freeing for me. He said, imagine that you have an unwelcome visitor, and they come to your house, and they eat all your food, and they do things that you really don't like. They get in your space, and you can't get rid of them until one day they decide, oh, I'm going to go to somebody else's house. He said, think of your illness in that same way because you have no control over it and you are not at fault for having it because there's a big part of me that with the background that I had, it was like, well, if I was sick and I wasn't getting better, it was probably my fault. But see, that's not what Jesus had for me. Jesus isn't saying, hey, the, the difficulties you face in your life, it's because you've done something. I want you to know that whatever it is that you're facing in your life, God is using that to draw you closer to him. And that he is teaching you that he is your refuge. He is your safe, safe place. And the healing he has for you, the security that he has for you is in him. It is not in what we think we should have. It is not based on our comfort. And God does not love me any less be just because I have physical issues. And please understand, I think that everyone has pain in their lives. Some of you, we can see it. Some of you, we can't. Most of us, we can't see the pain other people have. But I want you to know that your pain is just as important as anybody else's. Your pain is real, and it's yours. I've had people tell me, well, my pain is nothing like yours. And I'm like, you have a broken leg. You know, you, it's okay to be in pain. And, but they're like, oh, but you deal with it. And it's like, it doesn't matter what I deal with. Guys, your pain matters, and God sees you. Please know that the things that are dark, where you're waking up in, in the middle of the night because things are tough, God is there with you. And one of the things God showed me was, he said, Linda, you need to give me thanks. You need to give me thanks when it hurts. You need to give me thanks that things aren't, your life didn't turn out the way you thought it would. You need to give me thanks that there have been people in your life who have hurt you. You need to pray for the people who've hurt you, and you need to forgive them. And I need to forgive those people because, not because it did them any favors. God wants me to forgive people, and he wants you to forgive others because that person is taking up space in your head that does not belong to them. The space in your head belongs to Jesus. Right? Can I get an amen on that? That's right. Okay. And I have to say, I know that God heals. 
I had severe pneumonia a few years ago. And um, I was so sick, they didn't want to put me in the hospital, which I thought was interesting. But it's all good. And, of course, I have my own oxygen at home, because so I was kind of set up. But God told me that a friend was going to come over and pray for me, who the friend was, and that when she prayed for me, I was going to get healed. So I was pretty excited. So I talked to her on the phone. She came over after work. She sat on my couch. She prayed for me. An hour, be- hour later, I was like, running around, doing great. I had to go back to the doctor the next day to get cleared to go back to work. And the doctor came in, saw me, and said, I'm sorry, I have the wrong room. Because, and he's like, this doesn't make sense. There's no way you could be this much better. And I said, oh, God healed me. Because that's a thing. <laughs> and, and, right? That's a thing. And he he looked at me, he examined me, he goes, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a thing. And the Bible is very explicit that we are to walk by faith and not by feelings. My physical health is only one part of me, and it's only one part of you. After experiencing deep wounding as a child of sexual abuse, I'm free in my mind and in my spirit. God has shown up and healed me emotionally in ways that count more deeply to me than my physical health. And going through the 12 steps of Celebrate Recovery, God has used that process for me to find so much healing. And... I am so secure in how much God loves me. And God has walked me through that path of forgiving others. Because Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I didn't deserve to be forgiven. And it's not my job to decide who should be forgiven and who shouldn't. Because that is all up to Jesus. And So walking through Celebrate Recovery, it has changed my testimony. It gave me a place where I could walk through and identify what my hurts, habits, and hang-ups really are. And a path to finding um, health and healing. God has called me to give thanks every day for everything. This is obedience. I have so many wonderful things I'm grateful for. But it also means I'm to give thanks to God for the pain I experience. It means if I wake up in pain or I have trouble breathing, I give him thanks. If I wake up in the middle of the night not feeling well, I give thanks. And then I ask him who he wants me to pray for. Because one of the things that happens is if you have a chronic illness, you're that much more available to be in prayer. If you have to sit still, prayer's a good thing to do. I, I encourage you, do this. And being thankful in all things has made me more available to the Lord, but it also has put me in a place where I'm not f- focusing on what I think I'm missing out on. You guys, don't waste your life focusing on things that you think you're missing out on. Because God is present in your life, regardless of your circumstances. And he loves you, and he sees you. I thank you so much for letting me share my testimony with you today.